Traditions 12. And so that's what we are in the process of doing. Um, the Book of Enoch, which was uh, is an uh, apocryphal writing, which is a, a book that was written by Enoch that was su supposed to have been the great-grandfather of Noah. It didn't, it's not in our Old Testament, but there's many books that were written that are not in, in the Bible. In the Book of Enoch, some of the archangels are mentioned. Michael is mentioned twice in the Bible, and Gabriel, not Raphael, is not mentioned in, in the Bible, but is mentioned in the Book of Enoch. And so Raphael, um, I was trying to think of the best way to, <coughs> to do this without like boring you about uh, history and who these, I mean, and no, anytime anybody wants to call foul, I mean, <laughs> I'm saying, all, all I do is I, I'm sharing with you what I've learned through the years and what I've learned most recently. <coughs> so at any point, you know, some, if, if, I mean, we've all had those experiences of going, oh my gosh, I learned that wrong. You know, like, <coughs> so there, there could be something that I promise at any time anybody wants to go, actually, um, I welcome, I welcome. Raphael is associated with healing, you know, and Michael is associated with protection. Raphael associated with healing. He's often seen with um, a staff in his hand. And, and when I printed this out, I realized it was like microscopic, so um, I'm not sure. But, um, <laughs> about the Responsible for healing in the traditions of almost all um, uh, of the Abrahamic religions. So, I would look at Judaism first. Um, the angels are mentioned in the Torah, which is the, those are the five books of Moses, but they're not named. Uh, but in the Talmud, which is also the, the Jewish history, and it's where the Jewish people get their ethics, their laws, um, Raphael is identified as one of the three angels that appeared to Abraham. Um, and Michael, the greatest, walked in the middle, and Gabriel was on his right, and Raphael was to his left. And all of them were commanded to carry out a specific mission. Um, Gabriel was supposed to destroy Sodom, the city of Sodom. Michael was supposed to inform Sarah that she was going to give birth to his son. I see. Raphael was supposed to heal Abraham and save Lot. And so that was, it, it's just an indication again that these three archangels were mentioned in the Talmud. Um, Raphael is named in several of the Jewish books. And um, again, the archangel Raphael healing. Now, in the book of Enoch, I think I just have another image. Another, sorry, that's kind of... Um, fuzzy, but it should, again, show some with the staff. Um, in, in the book of Enoch, which is you know, one, of the, one of the books that was written that is not canonized, and not in the Bible, but um, he's mentioned in this way, talking about the four archangels. The first is Michael, the merciful and long-suffering. The second, who is set over all diseases and all wounds of children of men, is Raphael. The third, who is set over all the powers, is Gabriel. And the fourth, who is set over the repentance unto hope, uh, is Falmouth. 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 Spell it? P-H-A-N-U-E-L. Falmouth. 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 So, these angels that are mentioned... And this is in the book of Enoch to show you again that Raphael um, is named. In Christianity, um, Raphael is, is widely recognized primarily through, um, um, uh, as far as Protestants, our connection or our with the Catholic Church, that Raphael is, is, a, is a saint. In, um, in Catholicism, the book of Tobias, I, 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 it was something I was not familiar with, but it was part of the Catholic canon. And so, um, Tobit, there's a, a man, Tobit, who was blind. His son, Tobias, or Tobiah, um, was walking um, on, I, I don't know where he was going, walking on a journey, just during the course of his journey. And Raphael came to him disguised. And um, one of the things that he did, he was sent 
to heal his father's blindness. So like he has this fish because I was like I see a, I saw pictures of Raphael with with a, a fish or drawings of Raphael with a fish. I'm not there, but sometimes he has a fish. But what's the fish that he took out the um, heart and the liver and some of the organs of the fish and put them on the eyes of the father um, on Tobit's eyes and he was healed huh. of blindness. And that's in the, the, the Catholic canon. He was sent by the Lord to heal him of his blindness. Uh, as far as in the New Testament and with Protestants, um, only our, we say, I already said this, I'm sorry, only uh, Gabriel and Michael are the only archangels that are mentioned by name in the Bible. But uh, John 5, that's the story about the pool at Bethesda. And I looked up several, like the, the version in the Bible that, that, that I have, it, it doesn't mention the angel, but in the King James Version, just a minute, it's on my phone, <laughs> that the, the, all these people in Bethesda, right, they were about this pool, and all the people that were like, they were lepers, and they, they, were, had, they were crippled, and they were blind, and they had all these different maladies, and they would come, and they would sit by this pool. In Bethesda, it supposedly had five columns. You know, I looked at archaeologists who dug it up, and they think they might have found it. And so an angel would come down occasionally and what? Trouble the water. Trouble the water. Stir them up. And the first one that could get in there was healed. Well, it doesn't really sound fair. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one that could get there was, uh, was healed. And so... Um, I wanted to find, okay, now in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate there was a pool, which is called, in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches, and in these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel, doesn't say who, but it's attributed because it's a healing pool that it would be Raphael. An angel went down at a certain time in the pool and stirred up the water, troubled the water. And whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. Now, a certain man was there, and he had been there, do you remember how many years? Thirty-eight. Whoa. Thirty-eight years. Wow. And Jesus saw him lying there, and he knew that he had been there for a long time in that condition. And he said, do you want to be made well? And the man said, I don't have anybody to put me in that pool. Because when the water gets stirred up, and, well, this is, I'm kind of paraphrasing to you. Oh, no, not really. When the water's stirred up, but when I get up to go in, another person comes down in front of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't have anybody to do that. And so what did Jesus say? Do you remember? Get up and walk. Get up. Yeah. <laughs> he says, take your mat. Stand up and walk. Stand up and do it. And the man was, was healed. Um, now, I read a little bit more about this that I thought, okay, so they, they were, it wasn't the angel that made the water pure, or that made the water miraculous. Um, the angel just came down and stirred it, but it, so it was the stirring. And if they had known that, if they had realized it, maybe anybody, could have just started stirring the water, but they waited. They waited um, to be healed. And they waited for the water to stir. Um, so, what I read that I thought was interesting about this was, friends, stop complaining and start stirring up your own pool. Don't look for another man's pool to be healed. You've got, you've got to stir up your own. Stir up yourself. Get up from the side where you are and stir up your own poop, and then you'll find your healing. And um, so anyway, a very interesting thought uh, in that, and then also uh, with the idea of the angel, Raphael, wasn't the healer, just the one that, that stirred the pool. All right, let's see what else I've got going on here. Um, oh, okay, as far as patronage, I don't know, let me see what I have coming up next. <coughs> Chief healer, his role is to support heal and guide. Very kind, powerful, angelic being in starting the pool at Bethesda. 
um, thought to be the patrons. You remember when we were talking about Michael, the patron of um, military fighters, police officers, firefighters, people that are protectors. That Raphael is thought to be the saint of travelers, um, of nurses, physicians, medical workers, Christian marriage, and even matchmakers. And healing. Uh, Raphael often is uh, depicted <coughs> accompanying people on their journey with a staff and also with uh, the fish. But he's got a staff right there. He's a staff there. I think there might be a fish right here. I think oh, a, yeah, right he's there. holding a fish there. And, and the staff. And the staff. So, and just, you know, looking to see perhaps he was starting to pull with the staff. Um, the feast day of Raphael for the Catholic Church, October the 24th, which is considered Raphael feast day. Um, knowing that, it was what we said last time I was talking about this, we always can talk directly to God, of course, and we don't have to go through the angels to talk to God, but it's another way to access uh, um, some of God's messengers, or this particular messenger for healing. And the color is, is green, green, green. That's why I tried to, to put as much green there. Um, oh, and one other thing. In, in Islam, uh, Raphael is called um, Israfil. Israfil will blow the trumpet for the, from the Holy Rock in Jerusalem to announce the day of resurrection. So in, in that tradition, you see a trumpet poised at his lips, ready uh, to blow when God is, um, when God orders them to. Popular culture, I just found some interesting things. Raphael appears in Milton's Paradise Lost. Um, I found some, some other, some, even in some role-playing games, Raphael appears. Um, there's a, a story, a short story, A Walk Out at Midnight. Raphael is there. There's a TV show called Supernatural. Uh, Raphael is one of the four archangels, um, and there's a TV series called Shadow Hunters, and there's a character, Raphael Santiago, that's named after Raphael. And then I watch Criminal Minds, and very interesting <laughs> that it's kind of a dark show, but there is a character, and his name, well, he appears twice, he's not a good guy, but his name is Tobias, mm -hmm. and one of his alter personalities is Raphael. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like the more you know, the more you know about pop, you know, it's like, okay, well, that's interesting, but then you go, the more you know, you go, ooh, yeah. interesting, this was not accidental, that someone, uh, so, um, as far as recognizing Raphael, <coughs> many of the things that I read, some of them from Doreen Virtue that I mentioned uh, last time, is that Raphael is ready to answer with a quick answer, in quick healing. Um, some other things that I read from different anecdotal um, uh, things is that there's often humor, a sense of humor associated with the archangel. I read that if you have this, I mean we all love nature, but when there's this urge to take care of nature, or an urge, maybe it's to pick up some litter, or maybe it's to tend this area, an urge to do something positive, that that can be attributed to to Raphael, and you get uh, urging to heal I... and heal the world in which we live. Green, green, sparkles of green. I know that, um, and I guess it maybe came from the, sh the learning about the chakras. I don't know, but when I think about people that are sick, I always visualize them, or I always envision them in a green light, a green healing light, and that's very much associated with Raphael and healing. Feelings of war, feeling guidance on healing, not just the body, but healing relationships could be attributed to messages from Raphael. A nudge to express your true feelings, and um, that I also goes come back to the first thing is that Raphael is not shy in answering your calls. That Raphael is waiting to be asked to help, whether it's the healing of a body or the healing of a relationship. Healing, rejuvenation, and alignment are what bring us um, to, to Raphael. And what I found um, in, in my looking was um, a guided meditation 
about healing that focuses specifically on Raphael. So I'd like to, to do that for us. So, as we all know, we're going to get comfortable. You can hear me adequately. Yes? If I stand right here. <laughs> this is a, um, a good meditation. It's, it's about a 10 minute meditation. And if you allow yourself to open your heart and mind, knowing that Angel, Archangel, Raphael is present with you now, surrounding you with love, surrounding you with divine love, and an aura of angel energy healing light. So we first want to tune in to this orb of light appearing around you with an iridescent glow. This green, beautiful, emerald light surrounds your body, your mind, spirit, emotions. It surrounds your entire being. Tune into the light around you and focus on this healing light. And envision it expanding around you to embody the fullness of your greater self. Angel energy healing light. It expands to surround you, the person next to you, this room, this community, this country, this earth, this everything. Tune into the feeling and knowing of your connection with this energy that flows throughout everything. And feel and experience your oneness with all. And as you breathe and relax, breathe and relax, focus on your heart. You're going to shine a spotlight of divine healing frequency on your heart chakra. That energy center allows you to access infinite healing from God and from the angels. Focus on your heart. Open your heart and enter in me. And at this time, imagine an orb of angel energy healing is above your head. And it's glowing like the sun above you. Feel the energy and the warmth from this orb of healing light connected to God and connected to all that is. Allow yourself to remain focused within, yet aware of the orb of angel energy above you. Know that you're surrounded with light. You are safe. You are protected. And at this time, the orb of angel energy healing above you begins to lower down. Imagine it now flowing down over your head. Filling your mind with divine healing light, healing energy for your eyes, your ears, your head, your face, your neck, and your shoulders. Rest in this divine angel energy healing. Light passes down through 
through your physical being. Just feel yourself letting go of tension, density, and any stress or strain. And allow relaxation to take its place. <clears throat> when you can identify an area of stress or tension, go to it, name it, and then release it. When you find an area that feels good and is relaxed, go to it, identify it, and name it. Allow healing to enter. And as the orb continues to move down, there's healing light in your chest, your arms, your upper abdomen, upper back, into your core, down into the hips, the legs. Light, healing, and love now flow to your fingers, flow to your toes. And the light continues to flow down, 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 grounding you to the earth, which is connected to all that is. So tune in to your entire filled with divine healing light that's radiating outward from your open heart. Fill your entire being. And let the light naturally circulate as you breathe. Imagine that you're drawing in more healing light energy of God as you inhale. And as you exhale, you feel that light cycling throughout the body. you and just know that God and the angels will swoop in and release any negativity and they will release it harmlessly to the universe. And just continue with the visualization of your <coughs> healing light and it's replenishing every cell and it's purging your cells that are of no longer any service to you. <coughs> and visualize this beautiful green <coughs> light as it's working its magic, renewing, refreshing, revitalizing <coughs> each and every cell. Awakens your body's natural ability to heal itself. Awakens your natural ability to heal yourself and heal others. This is made possible by opening your heart and allowing God's healing life, which is <coughs> present every moment, to flow through you and allows you to radiantly shine this beautiful green healing light. Your heart is open, and it's allowing the healing power of love to cycle through your being. And now your mind is being healed with thoughts and belief. The light is bringing your thoughts, emotions, and beliefs into alignment 
with radiant well-being, bringing healing to your physical body, replenishing and renewing your spirit for its highest and greatest good. Radiate, shine, and enjoy this healing life. <laughs> final surge of healing light that flows in from Raphael and from our Heavenly Father. It's healing. It is divine love. It's divine guidance. Radiant love, that radiant light exists all around us. And so it is, as we say together, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts. Out of our knowledge of the universal law of abundance and our awareness as we give and we receive, we bear witness to God's love for us and our commitment to unlimited good. Celebration last night. There's so much. There's so much that goes on. Um, thank you. You guys that came to see the play last weekend. I was very, very, very proud of it. Um, and we're opening, I'm not directing it, but we opened Little Women, the musical, this Wednesday. Ooh. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday. <coughs> two shows on Saturday and a Sunday matinee. Uh, it will be very nice, very, very lovely. Kathy, what's, what's oh, yeah. what about your show? Uh, Friday night, if you have no other plans, I want to invite you to my show at the Center for Contemporary <laughs> Art. Larry has an awesome piece in the show, and uh, several other artists, uh, Tracy Jan.